gonna do one good nice seal. So you might wanna have two Okay, so that one's working. Yeah. Okay? So you said you'd like a DT joke. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes? Why? Okay, so it's a range. Alright, preferably a 20 mm. syringe. Okay, so do you want to yeah, or do you want to do something with it? You have to test the tools first. No, 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 we don't use the same syringe for that. What I'm saying is don't just ask for the syringe, actually use it to check the cup. That's part of preparation, alright? But you don't open ET tubes at the beginning of your shift and check all their cups. But the point is, you want that ready. Okay, so lection of ET tubes and a syringe. What would you like? Stethoscope. Very good, yes, your stethoscope. Um, doubt whether we have one of those available. Anyone have a stethoscope in their bag? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can be the one that's going to listen to the chest today. Okay, so thank you very much. You have a stethoscope. Did you, sorry, did you need to say stethoscope? Yes, and Yes, well, okay, for, to deflate the uh, stomach for afterwards. So I'm going to pretend the nasogastric tube is there, but that's a good suggestion, yes? Okay, so do, do you want specific drugs now that you're the one that wants them? Which ones would you like, doctor, on your trolley? Okay, so choline, remember, is not a sedative. Okay, so you also want muscle relaxants. Okay, so you want some scolene. Okay, I'll let you off the hook. Maybe your colleague can tell me what other drugs. What, what sedatives do we use for RSI? Okay, midazolam. Yeah, okay, you'll probably find that that's a lot of the time all you have, but what's better? Propofol, yes, you can have some propofol. I want two others. Hmm? Fentanyl, no. No, not that as a pen. Ketamine, yes. Why ketamine? Okay, ket yeah, well, ketamine is good for children who are having procedural sedation for doing procedures. Ketamine is a wonderful um, sedative analgesic, especially in a patient with asthma. Right, because it's also got bronchodilatory properties. It keeps your respiratory reflexes intact and it's quite cardiovascularly stable as well. All right, it's not going to drop your blood pressure like midazolam. Okay, so ketamine is a very good drug, and uh, mo most hospitals have ketamine. So, so, but that that wouldn't be the first drug that I would ask for sedation routinely. Metomidate. All right. So, metomidate is a sedative that we generally find in the emergency units, and that's the one that we usually use. Okay, so if you're going to get your drugs ready, and if you're going to, if these are these are drugs that you must know the doses of. Um, that ju it's just you can't look up the dose when a patient needs to be intubated. Okay, so this you need to get this in your head. Um, the doses of these drugs for kids and for adults. All right, so you want your sedative and your paralytic, so you can have um, scoline, and maybe what about a non-depolarizing muscle relaxant as well? Maybe a child, maybe. There's a contraindication to scoline, we won't go into that, but maybe something like becuronium, rocuronium, pancuronium. Okay. Is scoline the one that you can't use in malignant Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you also can't use it if the patient's hypokalemic, if they've got neuromuscular disorders, um, burns patients 24 hours down the line. Uh, so, yeah. So, it's a nice drug, but it doesn't come without compl complications. Thank you very much, drugs. SATS monitor, yes. All right, so we've got our SATS monitor there, <laughs> along with the imaginary nasogastric tube. What? I heard a good one there. Yes. That is, that is a beautiful suggestion. Okay, you guys are the doctors of 2012. You'll finish this year, hey? Okay, you must insist. You must, you must grow up as doctors with capnography. All right, it's, it's coming in, it's becoming more readily available. You must ask for it, you must apply for it, you must, you must make sure that your units have capnography. It's the best way to check ventilation. So capnography is an excellent way of confirming tube placement. You get various types of capnography, you get the little collimetric device, you get the little in-stream 
um, capnographs that attach to a monitor. You get little digital <coughs> ones that just attach to the ET tube. You'll see those in the free hospital settings. Capnography, excellent. Okay, so capnography. I don't know, but couldn't you probably need like an ophthalmoscope like, to just exa to check the patient's pulse? Like, I know you can see it with pupil, but no, because you can no, because you're not going to do fundoscopy when a patient's at resting, and you can use the laryngoscope lights to have a look at their pupils. But that is a good point because it's something we sometimes forget to do in a head injury patient. And while you've got it there, you're thinking of the airway, and the airway stays a priority until it's secured. But it's not a bad idea to just very quickly before it goes into the mouth look at the pupils. Okay? Don't put that into your exam paper answer, please. Um, it's not part of any protocol. But just in terms of looking at the pupils uh, for a neurological... Because the thing is, once you have your sedative drugs or any opiates or anything like that later, your pupils are, not, are going to tell a different story. Okay. Right? Yes? No, um, not for uh, post intubation, yes, but not not uh, not pr in preparation for an intubation for this scenario. Also, you need do you not need like bandages or something to maintain okay. the track tape? Yes. yes. Okay. Let's see if we can find some track tape because I want to show you guys how to tie a tube in nicely. Okay. So you get commercial trachea. It um, yeah, no, that's a track. Okay, so track your tape. Very good. So you want that available. And you think, yeah, no, you'll look at it later. Because <laughs> once the tube's in, everyone goes back to what they're doing, and you're sitting here. Sister, can I have Oh, sister, where are you? Oh, now what? Because you can't let go, and you didn't get your track tape before you intubated. Very good. And you want to put a bit of light? Yeah, gonna, that's going to be up already. I'm going to assume the patient has, a, has an IV access. We've already had that. Yeah. yeah, okay, so let's get our let's get our so we're starting to think of adjuncts here. So um, this is a nice little I'm not actually so sure what this is. I think it's a jet insufflation kit. Yeah, it's a jet insufflation kit. Okay, so yeah, it's a very fancy jet insufflation set. We might open it to show you guys. Okay, so I'm getting quite a few adjuncts here. Right, so. Alright, so we've got our little tracheostomy, and we'll assume that there's a blade to put that in, yeah? Um, just a question. Besides the sacrament, don't you need a, a ventilation? Like a ventilator? Yes, yeah. so you need a ventilator for afterwards, but in preparing beforehand, because a lot of the time you're actually not going to have a ventilator, because you're working in a clinic and they don't have one, or it's broken, or the only one that's there is already ventilating someone. Mm -hmm. A what? The McGill, thank you. You can pass the McGill's. I'm wired for the guy, the ED Okay, so you are saying a wire for the ET tube. Okay, so... What are we talking about? What's this thing called? A guide. A guide wire? <laughs> well, I've heard introducer. I've heard the word bougie. So what is this now, actually? Or oh, stylet. So we must get the names right. Because if we ask them for a bougie, we'll be very lucky if they give us one. This is a bougie. Okay? These things are like gold. If I can have one piece of equipment, if I'm allowed to choose one thing that I want in an emergency unit, like a special thing, then it would be this. All right? If you ever see one of these, make sure you know where it's kept. Make sure nobody runs away with it. This is a very, very nice piece of equipment. This is called a bougie. It's long. All right? This is called an introducer. It's called a guide wire. It's called a stylet. Um, it's got various names. It's short. You, 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 you feed it into your endotracheal tube before you start intubating the patient. It's a risky thing to use because you, it can poke past the end and then you can cause damage. It must never, it must never go past the, the hole there. All right? So you, um, <coughs> it's pliable. You can lubricate it with KY jelly before you put in. A lot of them are very stiff and very difficult to use. Um, and then you bend it over the end of the tube so that it doesn't get lost inside. All right? Mm -hmm. And then once it's in, you, you generally what you want it to do is you want it to flex the end of the ET tube. 
And I think if you haven't intubated a lot of patients, um, then put the guide wire, just assume that you're going to need it. Because a lot of people go, oh gosh, okay, pull out, put the guide wire in, and then try again. Just put it in from the beginning. All right? When you become better at intubation, then you, you maneuver the end of the tube a little bit better. Okay, so a preloaded ET tube with a guide wire and a bougie. Okay? Yes, that's a good suggestion. Why would you want that? <coughs> yeah, so if you've decided, that's such a good suggestion, because if you've decided that you're not going to paralyze this patient, because when you did your lemon evaluation and you've looked at the melon party and all those things, you've decided this patient might be difficult to ventilate. Right? Um, I don't want to paralyze them because they're not breathing already. Um, or let's say they are breathing, but I'm, I'm struggling to bag them as it is. If I paralyze them now and I can't bag them and I can't uh, intubate them, then that's it. All right? So if you're going to do an intubation where um, you're not going to paralyze a patient, then that's something that you can do. You can spray some lignocaine into the vocal cords to, to numb the vocal cords and to um, suppress the gag reflex and prevents a laryngospasm. Okay, what else? Good lighting. <laughs> Good lighting, yes. Okay, so shall we see how far we get and see if we needed anything else? Because I can't make suggestions, you guys need to make a suggestion. Maybe if you have like a little kid and you're using ketamine because they, they're prone to get laryngospasm and don't see any complications and have some atropine and like foresee some complications maybe. Yeah, you can get atropine um, for as a bit of a pre-medication for children. Um, that's a that's another medication you might want on standby. So okay, so that's another medication. Okay, there's one thing that I know you've forgotten. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, we, we're going to get to it, uh, so then you'll see what it was. Um, okay, so basically we've now prepared, all right? So you're going to get a little bit quicker at this. Um, no, we did ask for a stethoscope. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we've got a stethoscope. Mm -hmm. It's ready to, to be put into action. Mm -hmm. So now we come to the, who wanted the patient? Okay, so when, we, when we're talking about the patient, we actually talk all right, so you want the optimal position. So, either once, once somebody, you're going to possibly be able to do.